Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 8, the penultimate lesson in Section 1 on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll create our main UI, or a main UMG widget. In particular, we're just going to worry about getting the visuals correct. We'll do functionality in Part 2. Welcome to the ending of Section 1. That said, this series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. And all of that said, fire up your project, and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to the editor and the penultimate video in this section. In this video, we'll be setting up our UMG, and we'll be applying functionality in the next video. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is download the asset pack at the bottom of every video. We are going to be importing some of those today. So if you get the UI asset pack, if you get the asset pack open, let me just bring this onto the correct screen. You can see that's the actual asset pack there. I have it unzipped here. We have a UI assets folder. What we're going to do is go into, just going to move this into their window for a moment. We're going to go into textures, and we're going to create a new folder called UI. And then I'm going to go back into that uh, packet, packet, folder, uh, asset pack, and I'm going to select everything. I'm going to deselect the human silhouette for now, and I'm going to drag them into here. Now, as I do that, I'm going to get this pop up that says front, uh, font face import options. Yes. Just hit yes. We want this to import as a font because one of these is a definitely a font. I'm just going to control save everything. I actually want to revert that. It is not a, a normal map. It, it only started doing this in the recording files and all my prep files and never does this. Now what we want to do is we want to open each of these and everything but the font that is. And we want to set them to, well first I'm just gonna pin this up here. We want to make sure this is no MIP set because we don't want any MIP maps. They shouldn't MIP anyway because they are not boxes, they're squares but we want to change this texture group to UI. You never want a UI to also have a mip map. It leads to weirdness, really bad weirdness. All right, go ahead and save that and repeat that process for all of these. Make sure there's no mip map set to UI. You'll notice as you do it, you can start seeing the actual um, alpha channel. And again, UI, save, and go through. Notice I did not do that with the font because the font isn't actually an image, it's font. That is definitely not a light map. Oh God, I'm so glad I caught that. And this is definitely not a normal, make sure it is not set to normal, so it won't be a normal on this, so it won't say normal map. This should not be normal, it should be UI. I mean, I guess you don't have to revert it because you're gonna change it anyway when we do that step, but it's easier to not have to double check both those buttons. Mmm, chicken. And once this is done, we can get on to setting something up. Now, I've chosen to do this early, not what we're doing now, but the thing we're going to set up early, which is our font, because it's better to have it ready to go and not need it than to actually forget to do it and have to change every font down the road. So we have a font, and what we can do here is look at our our loading policies around this font. We can change it around if we want. Um, it really is up to you. I am gonna do a stream policy on this. So in lazy load, the entire font is loaded into memory, it consumes more memory. Um, however, as it says, there will be zero file IO. So that's input output when rendering the glyphs in, in, for in within the font. So um, this means that if there's a hitch in the load, it, will, it can cause problems. Stream will do it from the disk. This consumes less memory. However, this means it will make an IO file for the load in when rendering the glyphs, which could cause certain problems in certain conditions. Since we're targeting computers, I'm not so worried about it. I'd rather stream this in. All right, and our actual Kepler font asset here uh, we are just going to leave as is. Now, something I want people 
you could add a fallback family if you wanted to, which could be our default font. So that for some reason this doesn't load in, it actually uses a fallback instead. So I'm, eh, we can talk about that down the road. Um, these assets, these UI assets, sorry, actually no, these UI assets, everything but the health overlay, were donated and made by a member of our community on the Discord channel, and that is to Tony, who is a professional artist, so we have to her to thank for these assets. Um, that said, make sure to read the copyright notice also in the file. It's called a README. And let's now go to our core. In core, we're gonna create a new folder here. This folder will be our widgets folder. I was about to create the widget itself. We're gonna create two subfolders. Actually, we're gonna create one subfolder in this video. And this will be called widget components. And we're gonna store primitive widget elements in here. Primitives are things, so when we open up, why is my character open? When we open up this stuff, these, well, I'll float a primitive. However, to be fair, this is a redefined primitive for UE4. Um, we're gonna go into here. We're gonna to go to blueprint class. We're gonna open up all classes and we're gonna type in font, or sorry, text, not font. And we're gonna scroll down until we find our visual widget. We then have the different text choices here. What we want is text block text. So this is static text. We're gonna select it. And this will be our WBPC for widget blueprint custom, custom text. Pop that open, close it again, pop it open. So we don't need the full editor. We're not gonna do anything in it. All we're gonna do is open the font up and we're gonna change this to our Kepler font. We'll leave the font size at 24 and everything else the same. So now whenever we wanna add a set of text to a UMG widget, we can use this and it'll automatically use our new font. It saves us time. The number of times I've seen people create a, you know, color a button a particular way um, and use that same color, that means I've had it gone in and either copied the button numerous times or gone in and set it numerous times. You could just make one button as a primitive that has that color. It saves so much time. Again, remember it's work smart, not hard. Next, in our main widget folder, we're gonna create a widget blueprint. And we're gonna call it this WBP UI for user interface. And this will be our main user interface. So we have our lovely canvas panel here. In our canvas panel, we're gonna add in an image. Just drag it in, set the anchor to all four corners. So this one at the pulsing box right now. And we are gonna set the left offset to zero. Notice that it stretches all the way to the left side. The top offset to zero. Now notice in the top left corner. So it's moving towards that anchor. Technically it's also moving towards that when we set the left to zero. For the right, if we set that to zero, it pulls us to the right. And now if we do bottom, it pulls us to the bottom. So we're filling the screen. Well, this image, and always trust me on this, always name the elements of your widget, especially when you're gonna have children widget and it, otherwise you run into glitches. Like for some reason, and make sure if you are using similar naming conventions that you vary it per element. Um, Cause later in the series, I use the same name of inner and outer border. And let me tell you in the last set of recording of this, it kept deleting one of the widgets from this uh, from our inventory because the item menu and the item info all had the same border names and went, I don't know which one's which, I'm getting rid of that one. It took me a while to work that out, by the way. So this is gonna be our damage alert IMG for image. And under brush, what we're gonna do is find our T blood overlay. So when we take damage, we're gonna add this overlay, but we don't want this on screen when we aren't taking damage. So what we're gonna do is we are going to set the alpha. So if we go down to tint and open this up, we're gonna set the alpha. Ooh, that's the wrong thing, not tint. We're gonna go to color and opacity. Color and opacity and set it to zero. You could do tint, but it's easier for our control if we do it in color and opacity. So if we increase it, notice it starts to get there and it's dark. 
Just make sure that's set to zero. Grab another image and drop it on here. And we're gonna do the same anchoring to all four corners. So just go zero straight through. And this will be our stamina alert image. Now for this one, we're not gonna actually use an image. We're just gonna use a, a shade of black or shade of black. We're just gonna use black. So open up your tint, drag it all the way down to black or set it to zero, zero, one. Or if you wanna put the hex codes in, go for it. And we're gonna default this to zero. Now for anyone wondering, oh, but against the one, we can't see anything. Don't worry. In the next video, when we do an implementation of our systems for this, for this, what's gonna happen is that it will actually just go to a gray color. But we're gonna use black to get to that gray color though. Now I'm going to find something called a size box and that's going to be under panels. A size box allows us to set a particular size for something, anything within it that is. So we're just going to anchor it to the top left corner. I'm going to set the position X to zero, the position Y to zero. A size in the X will be 310. Notice it's gotten longer. So it's always going to be that width and the size in the Y will be 195. How did I work these numbers out? Well, I, uh, I'm gonna be completely blunt with you on this one. I went to these images, the progress bars, worked out the size I wanted, did the math for adding them together and then adding a little space between bars one and two and two and three and came up with those numbers. So that, that's how you do that. Now you'll see a lot of people will use this position to move stuff around. I don't find that that's useful. I will in some cases do it but in many cases, I prefer using alignment. So I'm gonna set the X to negative 0.25, which moves that to the right of our X value. And I'm gonna set my Y to negative 0.05, sorry, negative 0.5, which brings us down a bit. So we're now anchored in the corner based on alignment. So no matter the screen size, we'll always be in that alignment position. We're gonna name the size box our status size box. And in here, I'm going to put in three overlays. So we have an overlay. And the reason why we're doing an overlay is if you read it, the top item appears on, on the, or the item last in here appears on the top. So it allows things to be stacked on top of each other. We want three of them because we're gonna have three progress bars. One for health, one for stamina, and one for hunger. Though our hunger, or... sorry, delete that overlay. Size box only have one child, I skipped a step. We want a, within that size box, we want a vertical box. This will be our status anchor box. So things will be on top of each other, you know, going downwards. So, so I don't wanna call it status, it should be status anchor. Now we want the three overlays. So overlay one, which will be our stamina overlay, overlay two, which will be our health or hunger overlay, and then our health. So this is our stamina overlay. And in our stamina overlay, we're gonna have a progress bar, which I'm looking in the wrong spot for. No, I'm not, it should be up here. There it is, progress bar. Drop that in there. And for our progress bar, we're gonna do, uh, sorry, for our overlay, we're gonna do fill. Don't worry about that, it's taking up the entire thing now, because we're gonna have three things filling, so we'll divide evenly across them. For our progress bar, we're gonna set to our horizontally aligned fill and vertical fill. And next, what we'll do for this progress bar is we will go to style, and in our style, we will set our background image to our, well, this is stamina. So I'm gonna search for my stamina background. And then for my fill image, we are going to do our stamina bar. And if I find our percentage, I just start moving that air, there we go. Now, for the reason we're doing the overlay is we are gonna have a symbol here that indicates what this is. So I'm gonna grab an image and drop that into there. Very quickly, I'm gonna name this as my stamina prog bar. And this will be my stamina image. Or sorry, stamina icon actually. Let me just get my names set. 
And our image, if we type in stamina again, which I think is spelled wrong in the file. So hopefully by the time you get this, um, I have fixed this typo. Stamina icon. There we go. Now if I search stamina, there is our icon and it's on top. Without that overlay, uh, this doesn't work as well and it can be very problematic. We're gonna repeat this again. We're gonna get our prog bar. We are going to set that to fill. Notice now that's 50-50. We're gonna get an image. We're gonna drop it on that second overlay. We're gonna rename the second overlay our hunger overlay. This will be our hunger prog bar. And again, our background image will be our hunger background. Our fill image will be our hunger bar. And we will then just test this out, grab our percentage. Oh, sorry, I skipped a step. Make sure to do horizontally align and fill. And there we go. Let's set our image now to be our hunger icon. And notice how it fits there nicely. And then we have our final overlay, which is our health overlay. And what we're gonna do here is the same. Grab a progress bar, drop it in there, go back to delete that prog bar you just added, if you did what I just did. Go to the image, by the way, and rename this uh, hunger icon. Now take the prog bar, put it in the correct thing, and do another, uh, actually, does it have an image? Yeah, it does. Grab an image. For some reason, I thought one of them didn't for a second. Drop that into there. This is our hunger frog bar. And you know what we're gonna do. Hunger, background. And then for our fill, hunger. Right, I said hunger. I meant health. Health background. It does have an image there. Health bar. Ooh, that's the wrong thing. I'm fat fingering it. Now, let's just do the horizontal fill and align. And also go back to the overlay. Fill on the overlay so it splits across all three evenly. Now, there's a small problem with this. Ignore the image in the corner. Uh, it's black. So, what can we do here? Well, honestly, you can just move this to a red color. In fact, actually, what I'll do is just set this to red. You can use other colors, I just find it's easier to have red in there. There we go. And I swear I named this as my health prog bar, but apparently I didn't. So health prog bar. And then here we'll grab our image. Health, health icon. And this is our health icon. Control S, save, compile. We are done really for this. We're just gonna very quickly put this on our screen because the next video is gonna be a bit longer. It's gonna be about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to do the implementation because we're gonna make sure that we don't cast and we keep our amount of references down. Now, that said, we are gonna create a hard reference of our UI in our character. That's fine. We're, we're storing UI information in our character, whatever. Only the player is gonna have access to it. We don't want to store information about the character, all the functions, all the methods, all the variables inside of our, our widget. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a make widget event on a breaking play. And because I've noticed the set timers thing is not in a folder or a category, we're gonna put it in the category of game settings. So I'm just gonna create a new category, game settings. All right, on our then three, like I said, we're gonna have three things. We're gonna pull off of here and we're gonna create widget. What widget are we gonna create? We're gonna create our WBP UI. Now, from here, we're going to pull off of this and do a, make a variable called main UI. This will be a reference and this is actually a hard reference. We are making a copy of all of the functions and all the components that make this widget up inside of our character, which is fine. Even in multiplayer games, only the widget exists on the player screen. It doesn't exist on the server. So that, that's fine to have it that way. The thing to be mindful of 
is that we don't want all of this existing in this. We want this to exist in here. I will be explaining that, by the way, I believe in the next prep video, because I think that's when we start doing interfaces. So yeah. Now I'm going to collapse this down to a function, but I am not going to go in and put my normal return node in um, because we have other widgets we're going to make. So this is going to be called make widget. Actually, it should be make widgets because we are going to have more than one widget. And this will go into our game settings folder as well. And finally, what we're going to do before we can test this out is we're going to take our main UI and we are going to add to viewport. Plug that into there. Line that up just nice and neat. Compile, save, and let's test this thing out. Now, note, this will not have functionality. That is the next video. We just want to get everything set up. And look, there it is in all its glory. So if you've enjoyed setting up your custom progress bars and having it nicely anchored to the corner of the screen where you don't have to worry about your screen size, then please go ahead and hit that like button down below. It really does help the channel out. It lets me know that I'm bringing you content that you appreciate and enjoy. And I'm going to erase that hunger timer again, most likely, hopefully without trying to giggle. So if you want to be here when we finish this section out and add functionality to our UMG widget, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon. That said, do hit that notify icon, that little notify bell. Otherwise, you might not know when that video is released. If you want a copy of this project or you just want to help support this channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers will get instant access to all project files for YouTube-based tutorials or custom lessons that I'll do. Um, on top of that, Low other tiers will get the project once it has been completed on YouTube. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Rian, Quadmanson, and Haynes. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope, and I'm not going to try to hold it for as long as the timer. If you don't know what I'm saying, you missed the little Easter egg in the last video. So I hope that you have a wonderful day.